Hey folks, Captain Mark here. Thanks for joining us again for this weekend's report. All right, local captains making it happen out there. By the way, I forgot to show you my uh, Eric Morse gifts, but that guy kind of matches my boat. All right, so I gotta like that one. Got the handle to her. See you right there. How you doing? That's that. So two gifts. These things will be going into some yellowfin soon enough. But I thought I'd show you those. All right, so. Put those bad boys over there and we're going to start our report. My hair is atrocious right now. I know it's stupid to say something like that on video, but I don't give a rat's. We're going to start off my report. Fluke fishing. Eh, not bad. It's there. Fish are there. You can catch shorts all day. Big fish are there, like I said in the last video. But you got to find the damn things. There's so many small fish out there. Sea robins are attacking you and doing crazy stuff. Bait is out there. But uh, that body's a fluke, man. I don't know what the heck's going on. I'm not sure if they're staying out in the ocean on that bait out there. Just like all those tuning around on bait. Uh... Who knows, all right? But what did I do? My report is going to be different. We are whacking the nuts out of bass out there. And we're in deep water. We're doing it too, all right? We are out there trolling. We've been trolling out the last three days. Uh, Tony Maja gold and bronze spoons. I saw a video last week about it. I have another one posting tomorrow, all right? We just finished that one. We whacked them again on the gold and uh, bronze spoons. So if you guys have time, get out there. Those fish are, are totally keyed on those bunker right now. What we were doing, we were going out there at the end of the day. And what happens is, I'm sure you guys always see it out there. At the end of the day, you always see those bunker pods rise up in the water column. They're always on the top of the water. Who comes after them? The bass and the blues. Sometimes you'll see them working. Sometimes you'll see them blowing up the pods. But sometimes they're there. And they're kind of questioning whether they're going to eat. So you start pulling those spoons through there. They may say hello to him because he's not in the pod. He's kind of coming through by himself. He's a... What the hell is that guy doing over there? Bass goes over and says hello to it, all right? So that's what we were doing. We were targeting areas that we knew bunker over there, all right? We had this one certain area that we just kept working, and uh, we got the fish good there. So if you want, the bass bites sick right now. The night bites good. Your chunk bites good. Get out there and target those striped bass. Fluke fishing, you'll catch them. No doubt about it. Sea bass is going to be coming soon. As you heard in Captain Larry's last report, throw down if you guys want to just throw down a freaking one chump sleeve just to get those fish there. And once you start baiting them and start fishing them aggressively, they'll stay on those baits, all right? You just keep dropping baits down. So in essence, you're chumming as you're doing it, all right? So establish that bite. Then you start to work them. Once that chump sleeve uh, ultimately disintegrates, what you're doing anyway is you're chumming them with your constant baits going down. It's going to hold those fish there. You catch them all day. Not the toughest fish to catch, and they're great fish. To, they're really underrated fish, those porgies. They're great eating fish, and they fight like Mike Tyson. All right? So that's it. Go out there right now. Target those striped bass. The bite bass are here now. They're going to go to deeper water soon. Once it gets really, really hot, they're going to be on the bottom in deep, deep water. So you have to target them there and stuff like that. But those bunker pods are out there. Go where those bunker pods are. Again, we're not exactly working on a piece of structure. We are looking at bunker pods where we know they are, and we're dragging these things. Uh, tomorrow's video is going to give you a good understanding of how we're doing it. It's going to show you both how we deploy the outriders, and we're going to run the uh, straight backs with the mojo rods. All right, It's going to give you a quick how-to on there. I really got to do a much better job at doing that, but this is really going to give you guys a good handle of how the Kiko cheek spread works, all right? And it works very well. All right, we catch, we caught a lot of fish the other day. We were out with Joey Tiles and Club Shorty Kenny. Striped bass, that's my report. Get out there and say hello to them, all right? The kid's out there whacking them, and we're whacking them on spoons, all right? We're throwing mojos out there, but the bigger fish are whacking those spoons, all right? And they're whacking the gold and bronze ones, but don't hold me to that. They're definitely catching. You can see with your own eyes, like, he ain't so they're catching fish. I shouldn't say bull. I believe that twice. I'll leave it on there because if I bleep it out, the bull is implied what the second word is going to be. But it's not a great word to have, especially with my young con out there. So I take that. I, I'm sorry I said that, but it makes a point. That's why I do it. All right. So go out there. My go-tos are usually white and chartreuse when I when I throw out the two outboards. But Maja was like. He was telling me to throw out the bronze and the gold just to see how they work. And they work outstanding. They're really cool looking things, how he has them electric. It's like high tech spoons, all right? So that's my report. We're going to go over to Captain Larry, my man. And this guy's a maniac right now. Last one, he sneaks a plug in for his shirt. Now, what's he doing? He's plugging a woman's shirt right now. I'm hoping that's a woman's shirt. Uh -huh. He's got sleeves like this. I can't pull that off. So, Larry, what we got going on over in Connecticut? The Connecticut con, strong. I love those cats over there. Me ow. Larry. Thanks, kid. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Captain Larry Gonzalez from Larry's Fishing Charters. Just wanted to give you a quick report on the Western Long Island Sound. The fishing remains very consistent. It's a very similar report to last week. Striped bass and bluefish in 55 to 65 feet of water using bunker chunks. If you want some bigger bass, use heads on the bottom, especially when that tide's moving. It seems that the striped bass are responding better to the heads than they are 
in the middle chunks. Um, poor efficient remains very consistent as well, but sandworms have been out fishing the clams this whole week. Um, so take some, take some sandworms with you. If the porgy seem to be finicky on the clams, use sandworms and don't forget the chum heavy. Um, that is key. Clam chum on the bottom to build up a bite will bring all types of fish, porgies, sea bass, weak fish, flounder, pretty much everything. Um, but the good thing is that the porgies are starting to spread inshore. They're not just only in deep water. Now you can find them on the Connecticut coast, you know, right by Captain's Island, Island Beach, Todd's Point, pretty much all your inshore spots. You'll find some nice porgies in there now. Um, and also we did very good for striped bass on the troll compared to the week before. Uh, the week before it was very slow on the troll, weren't getting much, but we had a new body of fish. Pretty much all slop fish too, you know, 28 to about 35 inches. Um, and we did really good on the troll, uh, fishing 40 to 60 feet using white mojos, white umbrellas. Every once in a while your chartreuse umbrella would take a fish, but white has definitely been out fishing chartreuse all season long. Um, you could put it out and you could put the umbrellas on the wire and leaving two to 300 feet of wire out, or you can use, um, braid for the mojos. Um, I've been using a 16 ounce with an eight ounce mojo. So it's called a tandem when you use two mojos um, on one rig. And those have been working really well for us. Um, and yeah, so fish, fishing's really good. I mean, we're at our peak season. We're going out twice a day, seven days a week. Uh, the weather's been nice and the fishing's been very good if you put your time in. Uh, once again, be patient when you're straight bass and blue fishing at night it might not start right away. Um, you know, it could take two hours. It could take an hour after dark, but just give it some time. And uh, if you're marking fish, be patient, they will turn on. And yeah, guys, good luck out there. Catch them up. If, uh, if this report helps you, please give us a shout out. Um, and also I wanted to give a shout out to my man, Lewis. Lewis caught a 45 pound straight bass. He came on my boat three times this season. He was extremely determined to catch a monster and he finally did. So I'm very happy for him. Um, that fish was safely released. Um, and yeah, guys, good luck. All right, thank you very much to Lawrence, Larry. Uh, great report as always. We're gonna go right into Marco now. Where's Marco? We got Larry and Knicken. Marco's way the heck out east. He's on the point. The point of Montauk that is. Marco, what do you got, kid? Good afternoon, kid. Captain Marco, Christina Maria Montauk. Just touching base with you about what's going on in Montauk. Well, the large stripers have definitely showed up in full force. Everybody's getting them on wireline, parachutes, umbrellas. They're starting to take live baits. You gotta work the tide, put your time in. Know which tide to be on, what stage of the tide. Put the time in and you should catch a few fish. As far as fluke, fluke picked up considerably the start of the week. Sunday we were out, we did well with fluke. We put a few in the box. Diamond jigged up a bunch of blues. It was a great trip. As you can see here, Chris did real well. Today we had Joanna out with her family on the boat. Joanna here caught a nice six and a half pound fluke. It was a little tough today for us with the wind. We put our time in, we were able to manage two nice fluke. One with a mess of uh, ling, a couple of scup, and, uh, and a bluefish. Um, again, with the fluke, I'm gonna give you a tip. When you have your crew on the boat, have somebody on white, pink, green, Somebody using gulp, bucktails, somebody dragging lead. If you have some wind, maybe you want to think about some spoons. Meat strips is another thing we do. Whole squid, sea robin fillets, mackerel fillets. These all catch fish. Work the tide, find a couple fish, stay on them, play around. You should be able to put together a nice catch if you put some time in. On another note, sea bass opens at the end of the month. Very excited for that. It's good meat in the box. Porgies is always are biting well. Uh, and you can catch them just about everywhere out here in Montauk. So I want everybody to be safe, enjoy the weekend, talk to you soon. Marco, nicely done, go cheese. I'm over here, what am I doing? I'm doing the old Reaper rigs, Captain Chris over at the Reaper. He's got me doing all this stuff right here. He's got this, we're doing the Reaper rig. This, these are Reaper rigs. These are the skirts. I, I am bleeding money right now, loading up the uh, Preacher with all his gear. I don't even know if these are legit right here. Watch my guys over at uh, Fireland Sportsman. They're throwing these Nemo plugs. I don't even know if it's the right one, but it's pretty badass. Somebody asked me what the hell it is. I have no idea. This is what it is. I have no idea. 
I am quite possibly the worst tuna fish fisherman. Tuna fish fisherman? I don't even know if that's even right. But these things, I don't know. If they work, they work. Who the hell knows? I know nothing about tuna fish. We're going to see the Italian stallion, Captain Nico Pace, over in the Western Sound. New York, that is. Nico, que sa dish man Thanks, King. Captain Nick here from the Real Mayhem Fishing Charters in Port Chester, New York. This week, we've been seeing tons and tons of bass with a load of bluefish. Uh, mainly at night, daytime, we're still doing very, very well on the troll, bunker spoons, mojos, white and chartreuse. If you get over them, they're biting, you're gonna get them. Uh, nighttime's been a late bite. Uh, catch of the week is Angelo, 51 inch fish. It's a fish of a lifetime. It's his uh, second biggest fish. He got a nice one last year also. He's a long time customer. Uh, nighttime, there's been a ton of bluefish. So you gotta get through the bluefish. If you get through the bluefish, you definitely catch yourself a bass. Uh, other than that, Pretty much, porgies are staying pretty strong. Sea bass opens in about a week. Fluke fishing is pretty stagnant this summer round. It's not really jumping off yet. Uh, the water temperature in the Western Long Island sounds about 68 degrees during the day. At night, it drops to like 65. So hopefully the water doesn't warm up too fast and these bass don't disappear. Uh, it's June, middle of June right now. Uh, night fishing is as good as it's gonna get. Guys, I can't stress it enough. If you want to get out to get a big striker, now's the time. Uh, we're expecting these bass to stay around for another two, three weeks, but you never know. So, uh, you know, give us a call, get out on a boat, any boat. Just uh, get out there, the fish are there. You just gotta put your time in, guys. Back to you, kid, thanks. All right, Nico, one love, pal. Always love your reports. He likes standing on that boat. That's his gig, man. He likes that little scenario. And I think it too. The only thing he's missing is a damn con sticker in the back there. I'm going to have to ship one out to him, all right? It's just a matter of pride. I'm seriously, con is, it's just good luck, all right? So, we got Nico. Now who are we going to? We got Italian number two. Antonio Maja Jr. And what do you got, kid? Anthony Maja here with the Tony Maja Fishing Report. Uh, the fishing, striped bass fishing is pretty good still. Um, ocean bite is still over. It's mostly big fish. Uh, a lot of those big fish are not leaving the area. They're staying on structure. They probably go offshore during the day, come back in to feed early morning and, and evenings. Um, your best bet is to troll because they're not that plentiful. So you want to troll, whether it's live bait or uh, bunker spoons or mojos. You don't want to cover some ground to find those fish. Uh, also, you have Raritan Bay, which is still decent. You have good areas. I mean, it's not as plentiful as it was, but if you find the fish, they're, they're, they're pretty hungry and they're chewing. Uh, Dave Lilly got 11 fish the other day in maybe an hour and a half. Uh, up to 46 inches, a couple slots mixed in. Um, I want to say congratulations to Al Ritano and Pat Salvo for catching two threshers yesterday. Uh, this was bait fishing um, offshore. One was about 115 pounds, they kept that one, and they released one that was over 200. Um, and then this week I'll be doing Operation Real Hero, so stay tuned next week to see if anything happens. If I don't say anything, that means we didn't do well. So what do you think about him? He's like, I think his wife Heather keeps him in the garage for a reason right there. I don't know. All right, Ant, thanks for the report there, kid. You hear that noise? Can you hear that? Well, that's mint, you know what that is? That's Mrs. Kid outside, she's watering plants. She's a kook, all right? She goes out there water plants and I'm down here playing in the shop. Really? Where's, where's the justice in that? Who cares? I gotta get out to the con, I gotta get these reports out there. I gotta get these videos going. I'm getting a lot of damn emails from you cats, keep them coming, I'm like, I'm working here. I'm working like a one on paper hanger, like I said before. All right, so we have Maja. We left Maja. Oh, we're bringing in a new cat right now. We're bringing in a lefty. Captain Dave Flanagan. We're doing a light tackle specialist right now. Captain Dave, he's up in my hood. I see him once in a while. Me and the Yang as we pass. We pass over to gun our boats. But Dave is an accomplished fisherman. As, as everybody is on this channel. I'm not saying many toolboxes. My people I'm reaching out to. My network and captains. Dave's an accomplished cat. He's an inshore guy. He likes doing the skinny water stuff, all right? Sometimes it's been said that he's been out there in a thong. That's probably a criminal scene if you see that out there. Any man in a thong is probably illegal in the state of New York. So let's just completely wipe that out of our freaking banks right now. Dave, welcome. And this is a weird introduction to you, pal. Kid, what's up, my man? Captain Dave Flanagan here reporting on the mid-Long Island Sound Fishing. It's been nothing short of great lately. We've had a lot of big, big blue fish roaming around, 10 to 15 pounds. I'm pretty convinced there's even some bigger fish in there from the size of the ones that I've seen today. 
We had some good action today, a few good shots at some really, really big tank bass throwing top waters. I'm fishing deeper water, looking for bait on the sonar or bunker pods up top. If you find bunker pods up top, my best advice would be throw big, big splashy poppers around them. And if you don't get any fish in the first few casts, move along and find another pot of bait because clearly there's nothing following it. If you don't get a hit within the first few casts, you're wasting your time. Now, if you're not seeing bunker pods or if it's a little choppy, just look for bait on your sonar. Even if they're 30, 40, 50 feet down, there's nothing saying that those fish won't come up to the top looking for an easy meal. Inshore, the fishing's been really good too. We're not seeing the size that we're seeing in the deep water, but there's a lot of bass in the 24 to 32 inch range roaming around and a lot of nice blue fish from three to 10 plus pounds too inshore. Fishing boulder fields, looking for structure, even ledges in 15 to 20 feet can be really good right now. I also wouldn't look past fishing areas where you're gonna have an inlet dumping a lot of bait on an outgoing tide. All that bait stacked up in the back is gonna be flooding out and the predator fish are gonna be waiting to eat them. So I'm looking forward to the next few weeks. I think we're gonna have a really good midsummer run of some big blue fish and big bass well through July and hopefully the weather doesn't get too hot too quick and warm the water up. Then after that, we'll see what happens. But for now, just keep your eyes on the water and look for some bait, find some fish and enjoy yourself. Reporting from Mid Long Island Sound, Captain Dave Flanagan. Mark, appreciate you having me on here. Looking forward to doing it again. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Dave. Cash money as I expected. Nice report there, Kid. Well, Cap. Well, Kid Cap. Captain Kid. Captain Kid, holy smack. I think I just made that up. No, that's old. Captain Kid's been around forever. Shut up. All right, so what we got going on here? We got from Captain Kid to Captain Kevin. Captain Kevin. Oh my, there's a lot of Ks. Kid got K, yeah. All right, whoa. Captain Kevin. He was in his car last time driving. He thought he was like chilling mode doing that report. I kind of liked it though. I think he drives a Chevy Vega. Huh? All right, kid, what do you got, kid? What's going on, guys? So the fishing this past week in the Huntington area has been really good. You pretty much had your pick of fluke fishing or striped bass, uh, whatever you were into this week. Uh, Saturday's trip, that east wind kind of killed the bite, so it was more of a pick through some short fish. Uh, we managed a nice weak fish, but it was kind of a slower day. Uh, Sunday, we took the guys out. Uh, looking for bass in the morning and we were going to switch over to fluke. We found the bass right where we left them on those deep drops, trolled them up on the Tony Maja number four bunker spoons. Uh, we switched over to fluke. We tried something a little different. We went a little bit to the west this week. Uh, we worked those deep ledges. So in the 35 to 40 foot range, anywhere where it would drop off to say 60, 70 thereafter, we found them stacked up on that ledge, fishing the incoming tide. We had an awesome bite. Every drop you were catching fish. We had some nice keepers in the mix. Uh, we had a trip out last night. We went out for fluke to start. Uh, we worked those same drifts. Uh, it was a bit of a pick on the outgoing tide, a little bit slower, but Russ had this nice six and a half pound fluke last night uh, that fell to a bucktail tip with porgy. So like we were saying last week, if you could find some porgies or some sea robins, strip them, tip the bucktails with that meat, and you're gonna find a big fish looking for that. Uh, we switched over to bass last night uh, we ended up trolling up some nice blue fish. Uh, there was a lot of blue fish around now harassing the bunker pods. So if you're trolling wireline and you're near those bunker pods, try to get those spoons pretty deep. Try to get them down 35, 40 feet if you have enough wire. Uh, we were fishing around 20, 25 feet down and the blue fish were all over the spoons last night. Uh, so there's a lot of fish around. There's some good fish to be had. Uh, when you're fluke fishing, don't shy away from trying those deeper areas now. We're getting a little bit later in the season. They're gonna to start to set up on those deep, deep spots, even on the structure. Uh, so get out there and uh, catch them up. All right, folks, I wanna thank everybody for joining us today for this weekly report. If it's too much, let me know. If it's weak, should I go every other week? I don't know, I always listen to the con. I always respect your comments and your input, all right? Didn't I? You guys beat me down. You beat me for buttons. I wanted buttons, but you said, no, kid. It's going to be UConn. So now I got to call UConn UConn every day now. Huh? Why? Because I'm loyal to you. Yeah. I, don't, I don't mislead you. You say it, I do it. Yeah. I believe in the con. All right? And by the way, tell your friends to join the con. The con is strong. It's almost as strong as... I can't even make a reference to Star Wars or anything like this. I don't watch that crap. But you get my point. If there's like some super, super technique out there in the Star Wars or Battlestar Galactica, I don't even think they have that anymore. Remulons, whatever. Oh, did I ever show you who the king of Remulon is? Right there. That's mint, right? That's Shawnee Fries. Doesn't he look like he belongs as a, he's like the king of Remulon and some freaking planet? 
He's fantastic. That was him as a kid. He looks like he ate every gobstopper in the world. What? All right, let me go back. I digress. Thank you for watching Kikochi Outdoors. I hope you guys enjoy these weekly reports. Make a comment below. Remember, make a comment in your area. If you guys are fishing Jersey, by the way, I gotta work on Jersey. Big Nuts is gonna get kicked in the nuts. I'm gonna really pull for them, all right? I'll crush them like a freaking, what am I gonna do with this guy? Hold on. I will sneak up, this is a piece of rubber. It's not even rubber, it's pipe insulation. I will sneak up on Captain Scooter. Club over the baby seal. And say, you don't have a mess with the kid, I will crush you. <sighs> no, I won't, because he'll beat the out of me. I shouldn't say that. I gotta bleep that. I can't mess with Captain Scott, because he's, I love the guy, he's a great cat. His brother's a freaking nut. Taxi! Captain, uh, Jeff. I love them both. I gotta stay on Kiko Cheese, because they're freaking mint. Alright? But if he doesn't come up with another report, as I'm doing this right now, they're offshore. So I was gonna hit him with this. If I sneak up and I hit him in the back, he may go out cold, but if he doesn't go out cold, he turns around and beats the crumb cake out of me. I'm at a loss here, so I may have to go to the four or five work to the next carry. All right, legally, by the way. Um, thanks for watching Kiko Cheese Outdoors. Scooter Maguda, guess the dish might have mosh. All right, folks, that got a little weird there, but thanks for watching Kiko Cheese Outdoors, the reports section. All right, till next time, check it out.